sisters and brothers that greet you in the name of our Lord and the Savior Jesus the Christ, upon who spoke to John while exiled from the Isle of Patmos, declaring, I am he that liveth, behold, I was dead, and now I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Have you ever felt alone? Have you ever felt the feeling of a lone went? Have you ever felt vulnerable? Have you ever felt unloved? Have you ever felt rejected? Have you ever felt out of place? Have you ever felt that feeling of being unwanted? But these feelings bring us to a place where we struggle to accept ourselves and we battle feelings of inferiority. These feelings cause us to be debilitated and undermine our capacity to be all that we are destined to be under God and God's Christ. Let us pray. Speak to us from the witness of your word. Speak to us so that all these emotions and others may be arrested and placed under your sanctifying grace. Cause words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts to be found acceptable in your sight, for you constantly disclose the divine self as our rock, our strength. And our Redeemer. We pray that you be blessed, we thank you. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Sisters and brothers, something truly wonderful happens when we are encountered and engaged by. Jesus of Nazareth, who is our Christ. All of our negative feelings are short-circuited, and we begin to see the potential that we have, not because of ourselves, but because of Christ living in us the hope of glory. But there is no image, Reverend Sheila, that offers the kind of reassurance like that of Jesus as shepherd. The shepherd who likened unto the psalm of David is all too busy initiating and opposing our lives to be better. He acts with an uncanny grace, causing us to be the beneficiary of his grace. His loving actions cause our lives to be better, for he is moving us from one stage of inadequacy to that place of perfect peace and abundance. In John's Gospel, this Jesus identifies himself with God, employing the I am the eternal is, the ever-present source, and he fuses it with the shepherding image or simile. I am the good shepherd, says our Lord. Good, not in relation or over against bad, but good in the sense 
sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hyena runs away because the hyena does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my dog, and my dog know me. Just as the father knows me, and I know the father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And if they listen to my voice, he saw that there will be one father, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Brothers and sisters, we who are Christians, we indeed celebrate the Christ who willingly dies for the sheep. You and I know that we owe the debt that we could not pay. That the ancient Israelite sacrificial offering was all intended to accelerate human beings from sin. But we also know that the very ones who offered the sacrifice on behalf of the community were themselves approved to wandering and growing astray. But Jesus Christ, both priest and victim, enters into that most holy place and he dies on our behalf. And you glad this morning, this afternoon, that you and I have a Christ who willingly dies for the sheep. For you and I were yet in our trespasses and sins. And while we were yet in the wild of life, he laid down his life for us. He gave us another chance. By his dying, he brings us life in its abundance. By his dying, he offers us the means of living eternally. By his dying, he cancels out that which plagues all of humanity. For in his death, he reminds us that death has no more power and the sting has been removed. That's why we can declare that the psalmist declares shall not die but here to declare the works of the Lord. We celebrate the Christ who willingly dies for the sheep. But look at verses 14 and 15. Not only does we, we see, not only do we see a Christ who willingly dies for the sheep, but we also see a Christ who wisely deals with the sheep. Notice, brothers and sisters, Jesus makes it clear that my sheep don't be, but he also made it clear that I know my sheep. When I thought about it, that very closely I thought to myself that we live in a world where people love to label us and libel us. They are a people who can tell them that they know us based on what they see for what they hear. And if you live in the Bahamas, we deal with people who never meet you, but make up in their mind that they know you and that they don't like you. But I'm glad to report that Jesus is not so esoteric and carefree in his dealings with us. The Bible says he testifies, I know my sheep. In other words, he knows your downstream and your uprising. He understands your high points and your low points. He knows your good ways and your bad ways. He knows what makes you sick and he knows what makes you tick. He knows how to get you happy and he knows what makes you sad. And in spite of all that he knows about us, he still chooses to claim us as his own. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to report that in a world that is quick, to ostracize you, a world that is quick to block you out, a world that is quick to delete you, a world that is quick to make sure that you have no access. 
access to them. We serve a Christ who has access to us. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. And that's why, beloved, we don't have to be embarrassed to come into his presence. Because with our undressedness, with all of our idiosyncrasies, with all of our personality quirks, with all of our fractured personality types, he still knows us. And because he knows us, he has made provision for us. Somebody ought to be glad in here because somebody has wrote you off. But by the world is writing you off, saying I ain't got nothing to do with you. Why they wash their hands and try to call up everybody else and say I have nothing to do with him. Jesus is gathering and calling us to himself. He said, I know you. I know you on the inside and I know you on the outside. But how does he know us? I believe I heard the Bible declares before I found you in the belly, I knew you. And before you exited the birth canal, I consecrated you. It's been wonderful, Sister Diane, that he is not waiting for us to act to get to know us, but he knows us from our prenatal estate. And even if he knows us in our prenatal estate, all of our postnatal shenanigans does not disqualify us from being known by him. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. He says, I know them. He says, not only do I know them, but they know me. Can you not prophesy and declare that even though I act contrary sometimes, even though I act on a character sometimes, when the rubber meets the road, I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able Shut up. 
Because I 
to subject myself unto my parents, even my stepfather Joseph. I was willing, my God, to be arrested. I was willing to be wrongfully accused. I was willing to be condemned to die. I was willing to be stripped of my garment. I was willing to be beaten with rods. I was willing to be given a whole cross. I was willing to walk the Via Dolorosa. I was willing for them to nail me to the old rugged cross. I was willing to have that cross lifted high. I was willing to let them laugh at me. You are the Son of God. Come down from the cross. Save yourself and us. I was willing to die a criminal death. But I had the assurance that early one Sunday morning, my father would send an angel to go off a stone away. Now that's why I call him the clear.
Someone ought to just say, Jesus.
what we have to choose the manifestation of the blessings of the Lord. We have been good to us. We have to us, then we have been to ourselves. We thank you that you are the idea, you are the model, you are the trendsetter, you are the trailblazer. Nobody outshines you. We say thank you. God, I say thank you. And I thank you for coming to look for me. I see each of them also say thank you for coming to look for them. And you came in the middle of time. And you gave us exactly what we needed. Oh God, we testify that we may not have it to squander, but we thank you that you have been our one day to supply.
Oh. 